Following my recent chat with Rosie, the amateur jockey, and my chat with Kanan, who is also training to be a jockey, I had a lot of people asking me questions about owning X racehorses. So I've got in touch with the retraining of racehorse organization in the UK to ask them a few questions to pass on to you. Hello everybody, I'm Dia Busnot. I'm Chief Executive of Retraining of Racehorses, which is British Horse Racing's official charity for the aftercare of former racehorses. Thank you, Di. So first question is, how is it that horses come to be uh, ready to be retrained and what happens in that process before they are taken on to their new owners as ex racehorses? Most yards will have had quite a lot of groundwork and horses would have been given a lot of help in that area before they leave training. They will have seen from the day they were born, these thoroughbreds, they would be used to people they would be used to traveling, they would have seen lights. They are very social before they get into a trainer's yard because you know many of them have been through the sail ring. Um, so they, they have done all that. They would have been well broken in most yards. Uh, they would have then gone to a flat yard or a national hunt yard, depending on how they bred. And there would have been plenty of work that has gone on to, through the training yards when they first arrived. And during their training career, there would have been some education done with them. So it won't be completely alien to them when they leave the trainer. When the trainer and owner decide that um, the horse's racing days are over, they could be any age, they could be as young as two, they could be a lot older when they've left a jump yard or even a point to point yard. So you are dealing with a huge range. A lot of the trainers will have people in their yard that will be organising the transition from training to, to a new owner. It might be as simple uh, if it's in a flat yard that they think that this a younger filly particularly might be a polo pony, for example. So then the po they would have contacts in the polo world that would come in and assess the, the horse before they took that on. It is often as simple as, you know, a yard, um, the horse finishing and moving to somebody relatively quickly because many trainers have people on their books waiting for the horse to finish its racing. There is a misconception that just because a horse has finished its racing career, it doesn't necessarily mean that the horse is bad or injured or written off. It's quite common for horses to finish their racing career and then actually have a long career doing something else. Would you say that's correct? Oh, absolutely. You know, it could be a, something in a flat yard that probably actually isn't fast enough. It doesn't necessarily mean there's something very wrong with a horse, far from it. It's just, it's time to move careers. I mean, let's look at it, that that was their first career and they can have a second career. considering getting a, an ex racehorse what would be the things that you would say to consider that perhaps looking inwardly at maybe their own riding level or the facilities they have available to them what sort of level of rider should be thinking about getting an ex racehorse would they be suitable for a first horse or a novice for example they're not for everybody you know they are thoroughbreds you're talking about the difference between driving a ferrari to a you know a smaller car a polo um, <laughs> yeah, you know it's they they you are dealing with something that is bred to race now that doesn't mean that they're completely mad and wild and they're not going to perf be perfectly happy doing something else but 
to take on as a novice no I don't think that's your it's that is not suitable for your first horse but many as I say once you get them out of their racing environment and put them on a different diet and they have a different training that they will adapt very quickly but it's it is about time I don't think anyone should expect to take a racehorse on and think that in two or three weeks or a month that it's going to be perfect to go to a local show for example of course not this is about taking them back and retraining them to start with a second career but I think what we do how we support that as ROR with having um, a lot of regional volunteers out there with regional programs, workshops, club nights, particularly from to newbie owners that can go and engage and be helped with their training process. So the one thing I'd say from this, if you take a race or on, please register with ROR, it's free. And then you're in the group and you can get the help and support that you might need. Absolutely. I love that there's all of that support and that knowledge available to you. And I will link out to all of your website information in the description so people can get it easily. let's say that you've decided that a racehorse is the right route for you you've done all of your research you found the right horse he's on the way to the yard what should you be doing in the first 30 days of owning that horse to make sure that they are as comfortable and that you've set them up for success as much as possible a you've got to make sure that you've got the facility to have them in the first place and then you would need to look at their feeding regime how you're going to change their diet all of that information's available you can go to any renowned feed company to learn about a different diet for your racehorse and just gently start building a relationship with them and I think you need to know what you want from that horse are you looking at that horse as something you just want to go and ride out are you looking at it as a competition horse Um, and then you want to build your training around that But I think it's really important to a newbie, you know, that with a thoroughbred that you do reach out to the ROL helplines and contacts so that if you wake up in that first morning and think, oh, my goodness, what have I done? Mm -hmm. There's help there. And that's really, really important. Yes. And I did have a lot of specific questions from people asking how do I keep them calm on hacks? How do I give them more balance in the school? And I think to a certain extent, there is an individuality to that and it depends on the horse and it's about having a good trainer. But I'd love to hear what are the kinds of things that people do call up about and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. What are the sorts of things you hear from owners? We've been holding some webinars lately and actually we had a flat session webinar two weeks ago with Richard Davidson and Cara Hayward and we had so many questions coming in about training you know flat work training of your thoroughbred and I think all that information is available out there I think the one thing I would say when you first get your horse in the yard remember for example that it might not when you get on your horse it might not have had a horse you know you might not have put the foot in the stirrup before because in a racing yard your legs up Mm. so you know, they're basic things about a thoroughbred that is different. And some might have seen traffic and others might. It depends where they're trained. It might be in a huge training environment that they don't see cars and lorries very often. It might be in the middle of Newmarket when they see them all the time. So um, there are certain things that are specific to a thoroughbred, but there is so much help out there that that's what you need to plug into so that you know where you can ask all these questions and and as I say it really depends on what you want to do with your horse. Yes so I know that um, ROR classes are something that most people have heard of with racehorses of taking them to shows and I know that racehorses have uh, a lot of ex-racers actually become very successful eventers in their own right and showing horses so I guess it's there uh, I guess this is on the website too but an introduction to beginning to show your ex-racehorse or event your ex-racehorse in a chosen discipline. You're absolutely right there is all that information out there But 
it's you know there's a lot of work that goes in beforehand if you want to go to a show and that actually doesn't matter whether it's a thoroughbred or any other horse you know you go into a show ring and there's lots of lorries there and tannoys and things and although thoroughbreds are used to that it's still they're not going to a race course when they hear that they're going to be walking and trotting in a show ring very much I've really enjoyed this because I've always sort of said as I've on, been on this journey to finding my own horse you know oh I don't know about an next race horse I don't I've never really ridden thoroughbreds and oh I'm afraid what if something goes wrong or what if they I can't get them to slow down and whatever but I think knowing that actually there's a whole organization and so many people behind you and there to support you along the way that you're not on your own um, and that a lot of people have done it very successfully is quite a comforting thing to hear um, is there anything else you'd like to share for people uh, other than that, that your website is full of great information and any webinars coming up or anything coming up this year that you'd want people to know about? I think don't be afraid to reach out to people because they are there and there's so much um, passion for the thoroughbred, you know, because they are lovely horses. And we've certainly seen a lot last year when with the pandemic that people have got a racehorse you know people got dogs as we know and puppies and there was this terror gosh people are getting them and might not be able to look after them but actually uh, there's been some really good stories coming back and they do give back these horses too and I think it's very important when you get one to make sure you've got as much information about the horse as you can, you know, where it's been, what it's been doing, has it got any issues, that kind of thing. Do your homework before you get your horse. And when you've made that choice, then reach out for support. Yeah, it's just as important as getting any new horse, I guess, particularly with thoroughbreds, to make sure you know where they're coming from, what they've done um, and things like that. Well, thank you so much for your time, Di. I really appreciate it especially um, in this climate. I'm sure you're very busy at the moment. So um, I hugely appreciate it. And um, I'll be sure to see you well, everything below. Well, thank you so much. And I hope more people, you know, take an interest and want to think about taking one of these horses on. Thank you.